What's up guys, JV2017 here with the ninth and final part of my complete King's Fall raid guide, and today I'm going to show you how to defeat the final boss of this raid, Oryx himself. Now, this fight is difficult because there are so many different moving parts going on at once that they require constant cooperation. and. Everyone in your raid group must know what they're doing at all times and must execute in order to kill Oryx. There's a lot to talk about here, so let's go ahead and get into it. The goal of this encounter, of course, is to kill Oryx by detonating corrupted light and dealing damage with the aura or the brand. And we're obviously going to go into detail with all of this, but before we do, let's talk about roles. So the roles are very similar to the Daughters of Oryx. The first and most important role is that of the Torn Runner, and they are responsible again for jumping on these appearing platforms, stealing the brand from the vessel, and then holding that aura brand in the middle. And the clear distinction here is that the Torn Runner is not random. It's not chosen at random you're actually able to choose who it is. And so you need to choose who the best jumper or the most responsible person in your raid group is. This is absolutely the most important position. This person, if they screw up, you're done, you wipe. So this is the most important position, choose wisely. Next is the group of four guardians responsible for platforms. And they have to activate the platform, step on them in a certain order, and also detonate their corrupted light. And I'll get into what that is later, but keep in mind the one with the brand underneath, just like on the daughters, the one platform with the brand that's hanging up in the air does not need to step on their platform, just like with the daughters, they are on ogre duty. And I'll get to that in a little bit as well, but they still need to detonate their light. So it's important that these people know what they're doing uh, in this situation. Again, the final person is on ad control slash ogre duty. This person is responsible for helping out with ogres. Again, if you don't wanna rely on someone to step on platforms or detonate their light, this person, this is where you need to stick them, on ad control slash ogre duty. This is the least uh, intensive role in this encounter. So the mechanics of this fight are similar, but there's an extra phase going on uh, in relation to the daughters. So. There's a platform phase. Again, there's a damage phase for actually damaging Oryx. Then there's a post damage phase, which is this new element. And then we repeat this cycle over and over. And ideally you're gonna finish this in four to five runs. And that's, that's extremely ideal. That's barring no mistakes by anyone. Um, so it might take you a lot longer, um, but these are the mechanics. We're gonna go in depth with each one right now. First, we have the platform phase. And this is again, similar but uh, more complex than the daughters. So in the platform phase, all of the guardians are gonna jump on their platforms that are responsible for that in a counterclockwise order, which again, we'll talk about how you determine that. And then the runner jumps for the brand and does a few more things. And this is a lot of things are going on in this phase. So we're gonna go through them piece by piece. And I'm gonna separate this into two kind of parts. The first one is the on the ground people. That's the four platform group and also the extra ad control person. And then the second part is gonna be about the person jumping in the air and what they need to do. So let's start with the platform on the ground and ad control people. So the platform order once again starts one place from under the brand. So the brand's gonna be way up in the air and you're gonna start the order from one place um, under the brand. And that's easier, you know, just seen than said, honestly. But once you do this, you'll get the general gist of it. And also, just like the daughters, the one guardian that is responsible for that platform where the brand is hanging above doesn't need to step on their platform. That person can help out with ogres, and it's really important that they do. So keep that in mind. So the change here is that you can choose your runner. So the runner jumps first on that first platform because there's kind of a buff there that allows them to be torn. So once Oryx slams his fist down, the runner's gonna jump up and actually capture that aura and become torn and start jumping. So the thing here though is ogres will start spawning from these like black pools as each platform is activated. And then of course, each person, each guardian responsible for a platform is responsible for killing the ogre near their platform. And on each respective side, obviously those guardians can help each other by sniping the opposite uh, ogre, you know, uh, just general teamwork uh, will help a lot in this phase. And so the ad control and the guardian that has no platform, like I said before, should help in killing these ogres. And ideally these ogres die very close to where they spawn. And once they die, they will drop corrupted light which is kind of this big black ball that you've seen over and over in this DLC when they die. 
and do not touch this ball until a specific phase and remember where it is. Um, and each guardian, like I said, on their platform is, is responsible for that corrupted light. So remember where it is. No one else is gonna detonate that unless there's a super specific situation. So once all the ogres are downed, then everyone that's on the ground is responsible for killing a, an enemy called a vessel. It's a yellow barred knight and it's gonna spawn near where Oryx is in the middle and the start of the fight. And so you're gonna wanna kill that vessel and then reload your weapons, get ready to damage Oryx and stand in the middle kind of aura bubble that the air uh, guardian, that the torn runner has brought for you. And I'm about to get to what that guardian does here, but keep this in mind also, the bubble makes you immune to adds, completely immune. You can't take damage in this bubble. So just, you know, if you're low on health or if you're worried about adds killing you, just run towards the bubble as someone on the, on the ground, um, that's a good uh, thing to get into and to remember. Now let's talk about the Torn Runner. I don't have footage of this because we have a specific guy that runs it every time and does generally a very good job. So the Torn Runner is gonna jump on that first platform and get that buff that allows them to be torn and then jump along the platforms just like in the Daughters fight and they will grab the brand that's hanging up in the air and once they grab that brand, something different happens. They're gonna jump back down and then the vessel, that yellow barred knight that I talked about earlier that everyone has to kill, before everyone kills it, the runner is supposed to steal the aura from the vessel. So the vessel spawns with the aura that you're inevitably gonna use to damage Oryx. So the person that grabs the uh, brand in the air needs to jump down and steal that aura from the vessel and then run to the middle as fast as possible because again, your guardians will die if you're not quick about this. So that's why this is such an important job uh, for the torn runner. That's it with that phase. Let's move on to the damage phase. And this happens directly after the phase when everyone's in the middle in that aura bubble. And what you do in the damage phase is you shoot Oryx in his weak spots in his chest. He's gonna open up very obviously. And also you're gonna have to detonate the corrupted light. And I'm not sure about the specifics about how many Corrupted Lights you need to detonate. There's a lot of speculation on Reddit, but I'm not gonna touch on that. I'm just gonna touch on what I know. So the beginning of the damage phase again is when everyone's in the middle and Oryx will slam his fist down on that initial platform that he slammed. And uh, that's the side that you'll have to shoot him from. So keep in mind that kind of the direction and the positioning that you're gonna need to be in to shoot Oryx's weak spot. And at this moment, actually before this moment when he opens his chest, you need a Titan, at least one Titan that runs Weapons of Light to lay down their bubble. It's gonna help you a lot with damaging Oryx uh, in this phase. So once he opens, of course, you shoot the opening. And if you have Touch of Malice, this is an obvious uh, encounter to use the Touch of Malice. Just use it and you shoot the opening until he reacts. You know, he'll have like a, a shrug backwards when he gets hurt. And then this is when all of the Guardians that had their platforms are responsible for running to their Corrupted Light. and. That's only four guardians that are gonna do that. The ad control guardian and the torn runner will stay in the bubble in the middle and shoot Oryx. But what my group has always done is had a countdown. It's just a master countdown. One person on their mic counts down from five. And you start that countdown from when Oryx reacts to being shot. You know, he shrugs backwards. You count down five, four, three, two, one, go. That might be a little long for some groups, but it's really worked for ours, so we kept with it. So count down from five because the time between detonations on detonating that corrupted light actually affects the damage dealt to Oryx. At least it seems like it does. If there's a ton of time between detonating the lights, it seems like it doesn't deal a lot of damage to Oryx. And again, this is just speculation by my group that might not be necessarily true, but I do know for a fact, if you are synchronized with your detonations, you will deal a lot of damage to Oryx. So you detonate your corrupted light by standing in it for a few seconds. It'll kind of blind your screen and you'll see a notification in the bottom left that says, you know, JV 2017 has detonated a corrupted light. Sometimes that notification won't appear, just glitches. I don't know if Bungie's gonna fix it, but don't rely on that. Just wait a few seconds. You'll know when it's done and then you run back to the middle. Just like on the daughters, you have to avoid that giant blinding light. It basically wipes anyone that's not in the bubble. So you're gonna have to run back to the middle and then of course your torn runner needs to know not to move too much. Stay in one general location because everyone's having to run back and avoid getting wiped. And once you run back, you actually have some time to shoot Oryx if you do this correctly. So really this is about practice and making sure all your timing is good and the countdown is good. Some groups may not need a countdown, but my group always uses it. And this is such a frustrating fight, so much thing, so many things going on that you just may wanna resort to using a countdown for everyone on this portion. So if you completed this phase correctly, 
you will know by looking at Oryx's health. If there's a giant chunk of his health gone, like a fourth or 20% of his health gone, then you know you've done it sufficiently well enough. And also, you'll know by which post damage phase he throws you into, which I'm gonna go into more detail in a second, but if you do it the correct way, he'll throw you into the dodging mines phase if his health is above 50%. If you do it the wrong way, he'll throw you into the Shadow Realm phase, and you might as well just wipe because that was a bad run, and you don't have enough, you know, mistakes. You can't make too many mistakes on this fight and reasonably expect to kill Oryx. So keep all that in mind once you're done with the damage phase. Now let's talk about the post-damage phase, and there are two different variations that can turn up in this phase based on Oryx's health. So the first one is Dodging Mines, and this will only appear above 50% of Oryx's health, so once you get him below 50%, you won't see this anymore at all. And the second variation is the Shadow Realm, and this only appears below 50% health, or if you do badly on the damage phase, you will see this kind of as a punishment, and you might as well just wipe like I just explained. So let's go through these one by one. First is the Dodging Mines, above 50% health. He will spawn these mines, and you have to sprint in order to avoid them because they detonate very quickly on your location. So what my group generally does is have our platform guys run around their platforms, and then the ad guy and also the torn runner are just gonna have a different place to run. They can't really conflict with the other people because really wipes in this phase can wipe the whole run. It can completely ruin it for everyone. So if someone's bad at avoiding them, just tell them to go jump off the side very early in the phase because dying late in this post damage phase can ruin the next platform phase. And you're gonna have to do this over and over. So always keep that in mind. Let's talk about the Shadow Realm now, below 50%. So, one by one, your Guardians will be teleported into the Shadow Realm in this bubble that Oryx spawns with a mini Oryx. And inside, uh, the Guardians need to shoot the mini Oryx and also avoid its sword attack by jumping up and kind of, you know, just getting out of the way. And also, when you're in there, there's no health regeneration. So be very, very careful uh, with what you're doing inside of there and killing the mini Oryx. And the Guardians that are still outside that haven't yet been teleported need to shoot the Knights that will spawn on those uh, front two platforms and also kill the Taken Thralls. This is important for the people outside of the bubble. Kill those Taken Thralls that are spawning on either side and prevent them from entering because once they enter, they will kill the people inside. And again, there's no health regen inside of that bubble. So really, really kill those Taken uh, Thralls, prevent them from going inside. So. Once the mini Oryx dies inside from everyone killing it, everyone will be teleported out. And that's really all of the post-damage phase. Once your group has completed the post-damage phase, everything cycles over, it repeats. You return to your platform phase positions and repeat the cycle over and over. Also, Oryx has one final kind of phase where he goes to the middle. This is when his health is completely down. He goes back to the middle where he initially comes up and greets you, and you have to just shoot him in his weak spot in order to finally finish him off. That might trip up some groups, so don't forget about that. Once his health is completely down, he'll come back up from the middle and give you kind of the final hoorah, and you'll just have to shoot him in his weak spot to finally finish him off. And really guys, the best and most cliched advice I can possibly give is practice makes perfect. Keep doing this over and over. Do it for four hours straight with your group if you have to, to get this down. I mean, there's so many moving parts here. It's very important for everyone to really come through and do their job, do the job. And so that's really the only advice I can give you further from what I pointed out in this guide here. So what can you get from Oryx? Well, you can get all the primary weapons. There are several. You could get the helm on each character. You get the emblem and of course, moldering shards. Some people have reported class items and possibly a ghost, but those are more rare. So something to keep in mind, your first Oryx kill will guarantee a primary weapon drop, but that's only on your first kill. So once you've killed him, no more guaranteed primary weapon drops for you. Also, Moldering Shards. Having 20 shards in your inventory grants an additional drop, and it's only usable once per raid, and it's only on this Oryx fight. So keep that in mind, and also keep in mind, sometimes that can give you additional shards, which is very frustrating for people, but sometimes it happens. So I hope that the loot gods and RNGesus are in your favor, guys. I hope this guide really helped you. I hope you learned something new from this video, and if you did, remember to click that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Also look forward to my channel for continued Taken King content after this uh, whole raid guide. It's pretty much done. I might do a giant compilation video, um, and it might be like an hour long, but we'll see about that. Let me know if you guys are interested in something like that. So, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will talk to you next time. Peace.